Welcome to Marine Gurukul video series. In our ship stability video series, we are pleased to present video two, wherein we shall discuss the concept of hydrostatic draft and its calculation. Draft of a ship at any point along its length or any location of the ship is the depth of the deepest point of the ship from the water surface of the water level. Draft is read off from the draft markings on the ship sides, both port and starboard. The draft marks are painted on the ship side at the forward perpendicular, after perpendicular, and midships. In case the painted draft marks are off the perpendicular for whatever reason, then the ship stability booklet shall have a correction table providing correction to be applied to the observed draft. This correction once applied shall convert the observed or the read of draft to the drafts at the perpendiculars. If the drafts forward and aft are same, the vessel is said to be on even keel. If drafts forward and aft are different, the vessel is said to be trimmed. The difference between the drafts at the two ends. Units of trim are the same as the units of draft. Vessel is said to be trimmed by head if the forward draft is greater than the draft aft, and if otherwise, that means if the draft aft is greater than the draft forward, then the vessel is said to be trimmed by stern. For a trimmed vessel, the draft at different points along its length shall be different. Why? Because the draft forward is different, dra draft aft is different. So obviously the draft along the length at each point shall be different. The inclination of a ship is very similar to the inclination of a seesaw on which the children play. So let's briefly discuss the inclination of a seesaw. Here we have a seesaw on which the plank is horizontal and obviously we have two weights one at x one at z they are equal and they are placed at equispaced distance from this point of support and what do we see that height of the plank which is horizontal is same all along its length whether you take it as point a b c d or e the height of the plank above the ground in each case is the same, right? Now let us say we shift this weight x to location y. Of course, this weight at z remains wherever it is. So what are we doing? We basically, we are disturbing the equilibrium condition of the seesaw. So now, as the weight from x gets shifted to y, we all would agree that the plank would incline with this end E going down and end A going up. Now the plank is obviously inclined and what do we see? That at all the points right from E to A, the height of each point above the ground is different. But there is one point where the height above the ground remains the same as it was when the plank was horizontal. So at point C, even in the inclined condition, the height of the plank above the grounds remains the same as it was when the plank was horizontal. This point C, where the height remains unchanged or unaffected because of the inclination of the plank, this point is called as the fulcrum we know in physics. So point C of the seesaw is the fulcrum of the seesaw. Let's try to relate the inclination of the ship along its length with the inclination of the seesaw. We see the ship here on the screen where we have this weight at point X. And what do we see? The ship is on even keel condition. Why? Because we can see that the water line and the keel are parallel to each other. Therefore, the draft at every point, whether you take it at point A, B, C, 
D or E. Draft at every point along the length of the ship would be the same. Why? Because the ship is on even keel. Now let us say we shift this weight X and we shift it to point Y. What happens in this case? Water line remains as it was in the previous case. But what happens? The ship is now inclined and the keel and the deck of the ship are no more parallel to the water line. And the ship comes somewhat in this condition with the weight having shifted from X to Y. What do we see in this case? Ship is now trimmed by stern. Why? Because the draft aft is more than the draft forward. You see these lines here, these arrows here are the same height as they were when the ship was even keel. So what do we see at the forward end? The draft of the ship has reduced in relation to what it was when the vessel was even keel. Likewise, at the aft end, the draft has increased compared to the draft what it was when the vessel was even keel. And obviously, then the draft at every point along the length of the ship now keeps changing because the ship is no more even keel. Now, as we go along the length of this vessel, we shall have one point where the draft of the vessel shall be the same as the draft when it was even keel. So that means at this point, the draft has not changed despite the inclination of the vessel or vessel trimming. Now this point where the draft does not change because of the inclination of the ship, this point is the acting as the fulcrum of the vessel for its inclination. And this point is called as the ship's center of flotation. The center of flotation of the ship is the point which acts like the fulcrum when the vessel inclines. Let's understand the center of flotation of a ship. Unlike seesaw, where the plank could incline only in one direction, a ship, in contrast to the seesaw, may incline longitudinally or transversely. When a ship inclines, whether longitudinally or transversely, there is a point like the fulcrum of the seesaw, and that point is obviously its center of flotation. So the ship shall incline about its center of flotation. The draft at the center of flotation is not affected by the ship's inclination, like the height of the plank in the seesaw, at the fulcrum. Center of flotation of a ship through experiments is found to be the geometric center or the centroid of its water plane area. And what is water plane area? Water plane area of a ship is the area at the surface of the water or sea surface that is occupied by the or by the ship's hull and therefore not occupied by the sea water why because that's protected by the hull of the vessel in other words let's see if sea surface was a hard surface and part of the ship's hull was below water the remaining was above the water and if somebody could walk on the surface of the sea and he could just go around the ship and draw the boundaries of the ship at the water surface. The area that is would have been bound by those boundaries that are drawn on the surface of the sea would be the water plane area of the vessel. Water plane area of a ship is the area then bound by the ship's hull at the surface of the sea. The shape and size of the water plane depends on the form of the ship. So it shall depend from ship to ship, number one. And number two, for the same ship, it shall depend with the draft. At different drafts, the same vessel shall have or may have rather different water plane areas. Let's reinforce 
the understanding of center of flotation by taking examples of some of the ship shapes. Let's say we have a box shaped vessel. So you can see the box shaped vessel coming on the screen. The vessel has a length of capital L represented by capital L. It has a breadth represented by capital B. And it's floating at the water line as shown in the diagram represented by WL. So if this box shaped vessel is floating at water line of WL, then its underwater cross sectional area is as represented by this blue shaded area. And obviously it's floating at draft D. And on the sides, obviously, then this shall be the underwater hull of the ship on the sides. Now, at the water surface, if now I mark off the area of the vessel, then I'm sure you would agree with me that the area marked off the, by these red boundaries represents the area occupied by the hull of the vessel at the surface of the water. Needless to say, we'll agree that this will be a rectangular area whose length would be equal to the length of the ship and whose breadth would be equal to the breadth of the ship. So in this case, at draft D, or in fact, actually for box ship vessel at every draft, the water plane area shall be rectangular in shape and it shall have a length equal to the length of the ship and breadth equal to the breadth of the ship so this shall be the shape of the water plane area and we know the geometric center or the centroid of a rectangle is the intersection of its diagonals so here is the geometric center so this shall be the center of flotation center of flotation for a box shaped vessel shall be at the intersection of the diagonals of its rectangular water plane now let's consider a uh, ship of triangular cross section so we have a vessel of triangular cross section coming up on the screen the length of the ship is capital l the breadth of the ship at the deck level is capital b the height of the ship or this barge or vessel is represented by capital d let us say the ship is floating at a waterline wl where it's drawing a draft of small d. Now, in this case, obviously, the underwater cross-sectional area would be represented by this blue shaded area. And the underwater area on the side shall be as represented out here now. Now, if we now mark off the water plane area of this vessel at draft equal to small d i'm sure you'll agree with me again that the area bound by these red lines would represent the water plane area of this ship at draft equal to small d obviously the length of this water plane area would be equal to capital l it's again rectangular in shape with the same length as the length of the ship but its breadth is not equal to the breadth of the ship at the deck level. It's actually, in fact, small b. So what is the shape of this water plane? The shape of the water plane is again rectangular, whose length is equal to the length of the ship, but the breadth is equal to small b and not equal to the breadth of the ship at the deck level. And obviously, it's, since it's rectangular, it's a centroid or the center of flotation shall be at the geometric center or intersection of the diagonals. So we have the center of flotation coming up in the diagram here. Now, how do we get this small b? We have already done in our video one a question of a vessel with the triangular cross section. We can have this bigger triangle here, which is made up to the deck. And this smaller triangle made up to the water line being similar triangles, we can use the properties of similar triangles and that shall give us small b, the breadth of the water plane, divided by the breadth of the ship equal to the height of the small triangle divided by the height of the bigger triangle. So using this expression, we can get the breadth of the ship at the uh, 
water line and therefore in this case also the water plane is a rectangular water plane like the rectangle in the case of a box shaped vessel but in case of box shaped vessel the dimensions of the rectangular water plane remain same from keel to deck irrespective of the draft in this case the length remains unchanged but this breadth of the water plane shall depend on the draft greater the draft greater would be the breadth of the water plane let's close our discussion on center of flotation with ship shaped vessel so we have a ship shaped vessel coming up on the screen here now this vessel is floating at a water line wl drawing a draft of small d here now we shade off the area of the vessel on the sides which is under the water so this is the underwater area of the vessel on the sides and now at this water plane at this water level rather we mark off the water plane of the ship and i'm sure you would agree with me that this red shaded area which has now come up on the diagram represents the water plane of the vessel at draft d what is the shape of this water plane area it's a curvilinear area as you can see here so it's a curvilinear area we can find out the this area as well as its geometric center using simpson's rules and when we find out its centroid wherever it may be it's here and this represents the center of flotation of the ship shaped vessel when she is floating at draft d needless to say if the draft changes increases or decreases the shape of this water plane is likely to change and accordingly the center of flotation may shift a normal ship shaped vessel is going to be symmetrical about the center line therefore in a normal ship shaped vessel the center of flotation shall lie on the center line but its location along the length of the vessel shall depend on the area of the water plane having uh, understood what center of flotation means and its significance as the fulcrum of the vessel when the vessel inclines the draft of the vessel then remains unchanged despite an inclination at its center of flotation so the ship's draft at its center of flotation in calm or static sea conditions is what is called as the ship's hydrostatic draft so what is the ship's hydrostatic draft it's the draft of the ship at its center of flotation when the sea conditions are calm as already explained the draft at the center of flotation is not affected by ship's inclination be it longitudinal or transverse the hydrostatic of the draft of a ship depends only on two factors number 1 displacement of the ship the weight of the ship greater the weight of the ship greater would be the hydrostatic draft number 2 the density of the water in which the ship is floating to be able to satisfy the law of flotation if you are floating with the same displacement in water of higher density the hydrostatic draft shall be lesser if you are floating in water of lesser density with the same displacement obviously the hydrostatic draft shall be greater having understood center of flotation let's discuss the draft at center of flotation which is referred to as the hydrostatic draft now if the ship is on even keel as you can see in this case a ship shaped vessel on even keel condition of drawing a draft of 6 meters means the draft forward is 6 meters so is the draft aft which is 6 meters and we see that the water line and the keel of the ship are parallel to each other so obviously the draft at any point along the length of the vessel shall be equal to 6 meters so wherever the center of flotation may lie irrespective of its position the draft there is going to be 6 meters therefore in this case the hydrostatic draft shall also be 6 meters for a vessel at even keel 
are draft forward, draft aft, draft at center of flotation or the hydrostatic draft, or in fact the draft at any point along the length of the ship shall be the same. Of course, when we are saying so, we are disregarding any deflections because of the stresses. We are assuming that the ship is a straight beam. We just saw that hydrostatic draft of a vessel at E1 keel is the same as the draft at its ends. What happens if the vessel is not E1 keel and trimmed? Let us first take a case where the vessel is trimmed by stern. Let's say the ship is drawing 5 meters of draft forward and 7 meters of draft aft. You can see in the diagram which is coming up on the screen, the vessel is floating at the waterline WL, drawing 5 meters forward and 7 meters aft. Now these draft marks are painted at their respective perpendiculars and the length of the vessel between these two perpendiculars is referred to as LBP or length in this context. Let us say here is the center of flotation of the vessel. It shall be somewhere along the length of the vessel waterline. So its distance from the after perpendicular is referred to as LCF or AF. LCF stands for longitudinal center of flotation. AF stands for distance of center of flotation from after perpendicular both meaning the same. Now what do we see in this case? The draft here obviously would be the hydrostatic draft of the ship. Now we can see that the keel of the ship and the water line are straight. That means the draft which is reducing from 7 meters aft to 5 meters forward is reducing at a uniform rate. So that means this change of 2 meters from 7 to 5. In other words, if I want to talk it of in generic terms, the change equal to the trim of the vessel has taken place over the length of the ship. And we can use unitary method to find out the change from this point to this point. We can use simple unitary method to find out the difference in the draft at the aft end and the draft at the center of flotation which is the hydrostatic draft. We have just said that over the entire length of the ship, obviously this length is the LBP, the change in draft is equal to the trim of the ship. If the length of the ship becomes 1 meter, how much is the change per meter? The length is 1 meter by simple, uh, simple unitary method change per meter of length would be equal to trim by L. Now, if I can find out the change taking place from the draft aft over a length equal to AF and I apply that change to the draft aft, I shall be able to get the hydrostatic draft. So, if the length is equal to AF, how much is going to be the change? Over a length of AF, the change is going to be trim by length into AF. This trim into AF upon length is what is called as the correction, the after draft, because that is the change in the draft from after perpendicular to the center of flotation. And if I apply this change or the correction to the after draft, that shall give us the hydrostatic draft. Now, as the vessel is trimmed by stern, obviously, draft at any point forward of the center after perpendicular shall be lesser. So when the vessel is trimmed by stern, the hydrostatic draft shall be equal to draft aft minus the correction to the after draft. And what is the correction to the after draft? The correction to the after draft is trimmed into AF upon the length between perpendiculars. The method of getting hydrostatic draft for a vessel trimmed by head is not much different from the procedure we followed for a vessel trimmed by stern. Let's take a vessel which is trimmed by head, drawing 7 meters forward and 5 meters aft. The vessel is trimmed, you can see in the diagram, floating at waterline WL, 
drawing a draft of 7 meters forward and a draft of 5 meters aft. Now, this vessel, obviously, again, the length between the perpendiculars is the L. Then we have the center of flotation. The distance of the center of flotation from after perpendicular happens to be LCF or AF. The draft at center of flotation, obviously, we know is going to be the hydrostatic draft. Again, the draft changing from 5 meters to 7 meters, that means 5 meters aft to 7 meters forward, is taking place at a uniform rate. We can use the unitary method to find out the change over a length equal to AF. So we do the same thing over a length of L meters. The change in draft is equal to the trim of the ship. For one meter, the change will be equal to trim by L. For a length of AF, the change shall be equal to trim upon length into AF. And this is what we call as the correction to the after draft. Now, what do we see in this case as the vessel is trimmed by head? The draft as we go forward of the after perpendicular is increasing. So, therefore, the hydrostatic draft shall be greater than the draft aft. And this correction obviously then shall be additive. And as the vessel is trimmed by head, we know hydrostatic draft in this case shall be the draft aft plus the correction to the after draft, correction remaining the same, trim into AF upon L. Let's take a few examples of uh, getting the hydrostatic draft, both for vessels trimmed by head and stern, and also the vessels where the particulars may be part of the question, or the particulars may have to be extracted out of the hydrostatic particulars or the tables of the vessel. Now, question number one is a vessel of length 250 meters is floating at forward draft of 8 meters, aft draft of 10 meters. If the LCF of the ship is 123.8 meters, calculate her hydrostatic draft. So, length is 250 meters, LCF is 123.8 meters, draft forward is 8 meters, draft aft is 10 meters. Obviously, the trim is 2 meters by Turn. Now we can find out the correction to the after draft. Correction to the after draft we formula we learned just now. It was trim into AF upon L. We put these values, trim is 2 meters by 2 meters. AF is same as LCF, 123.8 and length is 250 meters. We put these values and we get the correction to the after draft as 0 0.990 meters. Now, if this correction to the after draft, which happens to be 10 meters, is applied, we should be able to get the hydrostatic draft. Now, as the vessel is trimmed by stern, draft forward of after perpendicular or draft forward of after end shall be lesser, so it shall be subtractive. Hydrostatic draft shall be draft aft minus the correction that we have calculated it shall be equal to 10 minus 0.990 meters and it comes to 9.010 meter so the hydrostatic draft in this case shall be 9.010 meters let's take one question from uh, mv hinship so that we also use the particulars mv hinship is floating at a draft forward of 9 meters aft 7 meters so trimmed by head calculate her hydrostatic draft length of mv hinship as picked up from her hydrostatic particulars is 143.16 meters draft forward is 9 meters draft aft is 7 meters obviously the mean draft then which is the mean of forward and aft that is 9 plus 7 divided by 2 is 8 meters now, for this 8 meters mean draft, we shall get the LCF because in the formula we need LCF or AF. So, in this case, we shall use the LCF for the mean draft. So, here are the hydrostatic particulars of MV Hinship. 8 meters of draft, you can see here, the LCF is here. 
and LCF happens to be 70.595 meters. The value of the LCF for a mean draft of 8 meters is 70.595 meters. We will use this LCF to get the correction to the after draft. Now trim is obviously 2 meters by head because it's 9 meters forward, 7 meters aft. Correction to the after draft formula is trim into AF upon L or trim into LCF upon L. And when you put these values, we get the correction to be 0.986 meters. Now as the vessel is trimmed by head and this is the correction to the after draft, so drafts as we are going forward are increasing and therefore this correction has to be additive. So the hydrostatic draft shall be draft aft plus the correction which is 7 meters plus 0.986. So hydrostatic draft is 7.986 meters. Now some of you may be wondering here why we have taken the AF for the mean draft. See, AF or LCF is required. What is the best choice that we have? Best choice is the mean draft. How much inaccuracy can it set in? The inaccuracy it can set in is acceptable. However, just to put to rest your anxiety to learn, if you want to increase the accuracy, then once you get this hydrostatic draft, we can carry out iteration. We can carry out, find out LCF for this hydrostatic draft and recalculate. However, for operational purposes, it's not warranted. And therefore, what we calculate with the mean draft is good enough. But if you want higher accuracy, which is for any purpose, then iteration can be carried out thereafter. I hope you have understood the process that I have just explained. This brings us uh, to the end of uh, this video regarding hydrostatic draft, understanding its underlying concept, its calculations. I hope you find these videos useful. If so, please do like them, do give your comments, do circulate them as widely as you can, because that's the only encouragement we are looking for. Do subscribe to the channel if you have any feedback. Do write to us at marinegurukul at gmail.com. Thank you very much for watching Marine Gurukul video series. Thank you so much.